Okay, in this video, I will go over question number five from the 2019 AP Calc BC free response questions. This is bringing back so many of my memory when I was taking my own AP Calc BC test many, 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 many years ago. Take a guess, in what year did I take my AP test? Anyway, here's the deal. I will have a link to the official questions in the description for your convenience, so go ahead and check them out if you would like. And also, for the other questions, I told Wuhan already, he is going to do them, so I will also have the link to his channel for you guys. Be sure you guys go check out his channel. Now, here we go, question number five. We are going to first consider this family of the function, and we will have f of x is equal to one over x squared minus two x plus k. And yes, we have three parts. So this is not just one question, it's technically like three questions, right? Just like your physics thesis. One question has like multiple parts. Welcome to the real life. Anyway, here's the first question. We want positive k value so that the slope of the tangent line to the curve at x equal to zero will be six. Well, slope of the tangent line, of course, that's an indicator that we should take the first derivative of the function and we just have to put in 0 for all the x, and then we set the expression to be 6. So we can find out what k should be, right? So here we go, f of x. And of course, it's much easier if you write this as this to the negative 1 power, and then differentiate, so we will do that right here. So we have this to the negative 1 power. And now, to differentiate this guy, let's put down f prime of x. Of course, Take the power to the front, and then minus 1, and the inside stays the same for now. So we have negative parentheses x squared minus 2x plus k, and then this is negative 2. And don't forget your chain rule. If you forget about your chain rule on the AP test, game over, of course. Anyway, the derivative of this is going to give us, be sure you use the parentheses as well. Here we have 2x, and then minus 2, and the derivative of k, because k is a constant, so we don't have anything. So that's it. Now, I will rewrite this a little bit. We have the derivative. We have negative and this on the top. So we have negative parentheses, 2x minus 2 like this, all over this in the denominator and square. So x squared minus 2x plus k squared. That's the expression for derivative. Now, we just have to set this to be 6. Right? Because that will give us the slope of the tangent line. And we want when x is equal to 0. And now we just have to put in 0 into all the x. And as we can see, when we put 0 right here, this is 0. On the top, we just have negative times negative. Therefore, that's just a 2 over. And when we put the 0 right here and here, we just have the k in the denominator. And you square that, and this is equal to 6. And now, let's multiply k squared on both sides and divide 6 on both sides. So we get 2 over 6, it's equal to k squared. Of course, this is the same as 1 third. And of course, we take the square roots on both sides. We get k is equal to, don't forget your plus minus, square root of 1 third, like this. And because the question says we just want the k to be positive, therefore, we can rule out the negative. So the answer is just going to be k equals Square root of 1 is just 1 over square root of 3. You can just leave that. I believe you can still have the square root in the denominator on the AP test because we're all adults now, right? So this is totally okay. So done. 1 over square root of 3 for the first answer. Now moving on to the next one. Given k is negative 8, we just have to put it here and then compute this integral. So we are looking at the integral from 0 to 1. f of x is just 1 over x squared minus 2x, and the k is again, as I said, that's negative 8 here, dx. Well, we have to integrate this guy. Of course, do our usual partial fractions, and to do that, we have to factor this. Hmm, x minus 4, x plus 2, that's good. Minus 4, and then plus 2, like this, very nice. And let's see what we have left. Integral from 0 to 1, and I will have to get some number over x minus 4 plus some other number over x plus 2. And we'll just do the cover up method in this video. I'm not sure about the AP test if the cover up method is allowed. You can actually just show work. I don't know. Let me know. But anyway, let's figure this out. Come back here, cover this up. x has to be 
4, right? Put the 4 here, we have 1 over 4 plus 2, which is 1 over 6. So we have 1 over 6 here. And we come here. Well, x plus 2. How can we get that to be 0? x has to be negative 2. Put it here. 1 over negative 2 minus 4 is negative 1 over 6, like this. And then just do this real quick. Both of them have the 1 over 6, so we can take that to the front. And notice, from 0 to 1, this right here, the function is continuous, so we can just continue without any worry, right? So, let's go ahead and integrate this now. We have the 1 over 6 here. Let's put down parentheses for the result of integration. Here, integrating 1 over x minus 4 is just natural log absolute value x minus 4. And the derivative of x minus 4 is just 1, so divided by 1 doesn't change anything. So this is it. And then that minus, just bring it down. Integral of 1 over x plus 2 is just natural log absolute value x plus 2, like this. And that's pretty much it. Now, we are supposed to put in numbers, and we will, of course. But before we do so, we can actually combine these two logarithms. So, we are looking at this as 1 over 6. Natural log, absolute value. This, over that, be careful though, the absolute value is needed. You will see why. Okay, putting 0 and 1. Right. As we can see, here is just 1 over 6. That's good. This is natural log. That's good. Here's the deal. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Over 3 is negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1. This is the jet, but that's going to be 0. And then minus 1 over 6. And let's see. Natural log, absolute value. Here we have negative 4 over positive 2. So this is negative 2, like this. right? So if you work out inside, we have negative 2, like that. All right. All in all, though, you see this right here, again, as we said it, is equal to 0. So it's gone, and you have 1 over 6. That's negative. So just put down negative 1 over 6, absolute value. You make the negative 2 just a 2. So we have negative 1 over 6, natural log of 2. And you can also write this as natural log of 1 half if you put a negative right here. But I will leave this right here. I'm pretty sure the... AP test wouldn't mind the final answer too much. So that's it, right? Finally, this one, for k is equal to 1, we are going to compute the integral from 0 to 2, if possible, right? So let's see how it, going, how it is going to be from 0 to 2. 1 over x squared minus 2x, and the k is 1. So you just put down plus 1 right here, and of course the dx. OK, now. As we can see, it seems like we have to do partial fraction, but not really, because when we factor this out, we get x minus 1 times x minus 1. So the truth is, this is the integral from 0 to 2, and we have 1 over x minus 1 squared, and we have the dx right here. Now, you have to do this one super carefully. Do not just find an antiderivative and then plug in 2, plug in 0, and then subtract, subtract. Don't do that, because this right here is in fact an improper integral. Because when we go from 0 to 2, 1 is in between, right? And when x is 1, you see 1 minus 1 is 0 in the denominator. That's no good. So in fact, this right here, we have a vertical asymptote that will cause this to be an improper integral. And I'll just tell you guys this is improper because we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. So we have to actually use the definition to break this down and then observe both parts. So now, 1 is a trouble place. And here's the deal. This is 0, this is 2, and 1 is somewhere in between. Right? This is bad. First, just avoid that. So we have to go from 0 to 1, and this is a little bit before it, so that's 1 minus. And when you're talking about 1 minus, you have to write this down as limit. So I will just put this down, the limit as we are going from 0 to a number, right? So that will be the top number, the upper limit. So I'll use b for that. The limit as b goes to 1 minus, like this. And then we have 0 to b. And then you write this down. 1 over parentheses x minus 1 squared dx. This is the first part. And then, next, 
you see, we have to go pick up from here. This is 1 plus. So the second part is that we have to do this plus another limit. We are going from 1 plus to 2. So I will just say a goes to 1 plus, and we write down the integral from a to 2, like this. So I'm pretty sure as long as you write down the definition like this, the AP grader will be really happy. Okay, so that's the idea. And now we just have to do each part. So let's look at this, the limit as b goes to 1 minus. And of course, we still have to work out this integral. Well, to do so, you can do a u sub, let u equal to x minus 1. And then you will see that du is the same as dx. And you will see that we have to integrate u to the negative 2 power. Add 1 to the power is negative 1, divided by negative 1. All in all, you get negative 1 over u, which is the x minus 1, like this. Right? So that's the antiderivative part. And then, of course, you still have to plug in numbers 0 to b, like this. So that's pretty much the idea. And then I will have to put parentheses like this to be better. And technically, you should also write this down, but the truth is you don't have to. Because this right here will tell you something really important. Anyway, continue. Again, as you can see, we have b approaching 1 minus. Putting b and then subtract and then you're putting 0, right? So very nice. And of course, you still have this part, but again, take a look right here. This right here is innocent because it's finite. That's good. Now, we have to pay attention to what happens when b goes to 1, negative, right here. Okay, so as you can see, just observe this part. We see that this is negative 1 over, put 1 minus here, we have 1 minus, and then minus 1. Okay, on the top, let's draw arrow because we are taking limit technically. On the top, we have negative 1 over. Yes, on the bottom, we have 1 minus 1, which is 0, but 1 minus minus 1 is actually 0 minus. And the idea is that this right here is like 0 0.999, just think about it like that minus 1, you will end up with negative 0 .00 0 0.0001. So it's a number slightly less than 0, namely you just put down 0 minus. And when you are doing limits, whenever we have a non-zero number over some kind of 0 right here, we will end up with either positive infinity or negative infinity, depending on the sign. Well, here we have positive divided by negative. Of course, you can see that. All you know, we get positive infinity. And yes, you can see from the same limit right here, okay, this, from this limit here, this is infinity, subtract some finite number, this is it. This part diverges because it's infinity, right? And the truth is, as long as one of these right here diverges, game over. You don't even have to consider the other part. I hope that's also the case for the AP test. I hope if you just show this, it should be enough to get full credit on the test. To be honest, I haven't uh, checked the grading for the things that they are looking for, but I think this is pretty legit, especially for my class. As long as you show one part diverges, the other one, you don't even have to work it out. Even though this right here, you may get negative infinity, but the truth is you are talking about two different limits, technically. This is the limit as b goes to 1 minus. This is the limit as a goes to 1 plus. a and b are totally different, right, in that sense. Of course, you guys can also check out my other video. I have a really similar video on this already, so be sure you guys go check them out. So now, the conclusion is that the original improper integral diverges. So let me just write this down right here for you guys. The integral from 0 to 2, 1 over x squared minus 2x when k is equal to positive 1, so let me just put on plus 1 here, dx here, this integral diverges, and perhaps you can also show that, because the integral right here diverges. This is enough, right? And perhaps once they have the answer key, I will also double check to see how they want the students to write out the explanation on why this right here diverges. So hopefully you guys all like this video. Be sure you guys go check out Wuhan's channel because he will have the other questions for you guys. All right? So if you guys like my videos, be sure to give me a like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much. And as always, that's it.